Welcome to All About Albemarle, the segment where we talk about the things that matter to the people who live, work, and play in the city of Albemarle. I'm David Fath, the Communications Director for the city, and joining me today is Greg Sullivan, the owner and president of the Wampus Cats, the Wood Bat baseball team that calls Albemarle home. Greg, thank you for joining us. Thanks, David. Glad to be great. here. Yeah, great. So for the folks who don't know, uh, what are the Wampus Cats? Yeah, the Wampus Cats, we started playing in Albemarle um, last summer. We're a summer collegiate baseball team. Um, kind of given a little more context, these teams have been around for um, generations, um, training players that play for college baseball teams um, during the summer when they're not allowed to practice with their school and are supposed to be back home and that kind of thing. Um, when Major League Baseball contracted their minor league affiliates um, during the pandemic, they went from 160 teams around the country affiliated with MLB clubs down to 120. So you started seeing um, those 40 left behind um, look for a different model. And this was kind of the development that began to take the place of the traditional um, minor league development. So there's still minor league baseball. There just aren't as many teams and a lot of the developments being done at the college level. And in the summertime, that's being done by clubs like us. And we've had a very successful first season. Uh, you guys called Don Montgomery Park home. Um, tell folks a little bit about the game day experience. What can they expect? Yeah, so in a lot of ways, we want these games to feel just like Annapolis Cannonballers games or Charlotte Nice games. Obviously, it's going to be more intimate. Um, it's a small ballpark. Um, we, we've seen a few good examples um, around the country of uh, – you know, thousand or, or less capacity facilities that still are able to generate that kind of fun and excitement, uh, family fun, uh, just spectator experience. Um, there's a good team in Mooresville that's now in our new league, which we can talk about soon. But, um, you know, that we, we've we seen we've seen a lot of uh, potential there. And, uh, you know, last year we really tapped into that. We had games going on in the field. Um, just a lot of fun, you know, local businesses getting involved, uh, local locals hosting players as host families um, and uh, people coming out to the games. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's, uh, you know, a place where the whole community is getting together now. Yeah. I, and I think one of the interesting parts of this uh, type of league is the fact that you get to see players that maybe you followed locally and sort of see their progression. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I you know, I'd say one of the things that attracted us to Albemarle was that there's there's a lot of good baseball qualities to it, but one part is there's a there's already a baseball culture in town and and for girls a softball culture. Um, you know, we've we've had in Albemarle or Stanley County, you know, some state title contenders in softball, state title contenders in baseball. Um, you know, really last the last few years you've you've seen you know, Rhett Louder for Wake Forest. And and now, you know, he's in uh, the minor leagues. He uh, played for North Stanley. Um, I know we've got players this year from West Stanley, um, which is a powerhouse really in the region and South Stanley as well. Um, you know, so players have come from all of these high schools, um, you know, and, and gone on. And uh, now in the summertime, they don't have to leave. Uh, but we're also bringing in some of the best players from surrounding communities like uh, Monroe, Salisbury. Um, really, there's a lot of similar baseball cultures, um, and we're kind of the regional team for for those communities as well. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting. You've talked about the geography uh, being a good reason why uh, Albemarle is a, a great city to host wood bat baseball. Uh, also, you know, the growth that's occurring here makes it an attractive destination too. Yeah, that's right. I, you know, there are a lot of good um, communities around Charlotte. Um, you kind of look, at least for me, I was kind of looking for a community that had a sense of itself, but also a community uh, that looked like it was a, a place that was, you know, going places, exciting things happening. You know, sometimes there'll be like bedroom communities around Charlotte where, you know, it, it's we all love transplants, but if it's a if it's like eighty percent of a town is a transplant, it's a little bit 
you know, it kind of loses a sense of identity. So, you know, Albemarle is kind of a place that knows what it is. It, it, it has a culture, um, but it's also growing. Um, and so, you know, I think that was kind of a perfect mix for us. Um, you know, we've got people coming in, uh, tourists, you know, staying, staying around the area, going to the lake on the weekend, coming to catch a game. Um, you know, we've got baseball families coming in to our games from other places and it's just, it's a good spot, um, and really a regional hub, you know, a lot of, a lot of surrounding counties, people do their shopping and kind of Albemarle's kind of a, of like a core city for for their weekly habits. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about what's new this year. You, like we said before, we had a successful inaugural season. Uh, what can fans expect that will be different this time? Yeah, I think just you know the the obvious thing is is we joined the Southern Collegiate Baseball League, which has been around since 1999. Um, it's one of the older ones in in the southeast. Um, for summer collegiate baseball. It's actually part of the same national association as the Cape Cod League, which is the most famous um, in the country, and the Valley League, which is another another top one in, in the um, mid-Atlantic, southeast. Um, so a really good baseball league. It's, it's um, connected with Major League Baseball, um, where they do provide some funding for it and also um, advise us. Um, we, uh, you know, uh, get kind of we partner with some of these other top leagues to, uh, you know, buy baseballs and get a lot of the the goods the guys need to have a successful season. So that infrastructure is going to really help the club. Um, and it also will, I think, over time, bring in a better caliber of player every year. Um, but also, I think being in a league structure now, we're going to have more consistent opponents. And that that's crucial for, for these guys. They want to know – um, that they're not going to go play for a team where they're going to be seeing pitchers throwing 75 miles an hour. They want to be seeing people throwing 85, 90. Um, and that's what this league will provide um, for them, you know, competitive atmosphere. Um, but, you know, I think we also just kind of getting back to the fan experience, we want to, we want to, you know, build on what we started last year where we had some people, you know, um, you know, from the community coming out, this isn't, um, you know, something where it's their, you know, there's some teams around the country where it's their parents and girlfriends at their games, but this is a, this is like a community gathering place. This is, you know, where you can take a corporate outing, you know, we're going to be reaching out to these large employers in the URA region and Stanley County and trying to get uh, hospitality packages, corporate packages, group nights out, you know, church groups. We're going to try to bring people in um, where we can all have fun. And, Cause what it's really all about is getting together, um, you know, with your friends and, and family and neighbors and having a good time. Absolutely. Um, and we're also this year, we're also working on um, enhancing some areas around the third base side. So we're actually going to be working on that some this week. And, you know, I think the, the more like, you know, good views we can give fans, the more like just cool aspects of the park, you know, last year we added some stadium seats for, for sponsors. We, we tried to find ways to, you know, make a smaller uh, capacity facility feel more like a stadium. And it's, uh, you know, I think we we've, we've come a long way and we're going to keep trying to improve on it. Yeah, it's it's a very intimate way of, of watching the game because you're, you're right up there. You see the action close. It's, it's really a cool fan experience. Um, let's talk a little bit about tickets and schedule. What do people need to know? Yeah, so we we've released our home schedule now. It's on our our website and social media. Um, the games get started May twenty fifth, so we're already you know pretty far along preparing. You know, talking to sponsors, uh, making sure the players know what they're doing, know where they're staying, if they're coming into town, uh, know where to go. Um, you know, uniforms and stuff like that are ordered. It's it's uh you know we're pretty far along in the process, um, and then. Tickets are eight dollars um, at the gate. Um, kids three and under are free. Um, you can also buy tickets online. They're they're not on sale quite yet, but they will be in the next couple of weeks. And they're they're seven dollars plus the um, you know online ticket fee. Um, buying it that way, so lots of fun. And, and you know, I think if you know if you have a company or you work with a company, you know, we also have discounts for groups, and uh, we're looking to really do a lot of that this year. Um, 
So yeah, it's common is it, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting. You know, I think we're, we're looking forward to seeing what year two will be. We know we're going to play some tough teams and, uh, you know, looking forward to seeing how we match up. We finished around 500 last year. So the goal is to do better, you know, so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll compete for a title this year and see how it goes. Well, the Wampus Cats have been off to a great start in year one. Can't wait to see what they do in year two. Greg, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, that is all the time we have this week for All About Albemarle. Don't forget to follow the City of Albemarle on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. For Greg Sullivan, I'm David Fath. Thanks for listening.